What's up guys, for today's video we're going to be looking at this. pedal just got it this is the analog man king of tone in a very cool green color so it's got the four jack option and then it's high gain both sides i just got it and uh i thought well i should probably do a video with it so you're probably wondering to yourself right now tanner why did you buy king of tone you have a helix the helix has a king of tone built in why do you need the analog version uh, well, the opportunity arose for me to pick one up and I wanted to see for myself, is there any difference between the analog King of Tone versus the digital King of Tone? Now there's some videos around of people comparing the two into a Helix amp, um, but I have tube amps. I play through the tube amps a lot. Uh, recently, that's pretty much all I play through live is these uh, the Victory V30 and V40 in stereo. So I haven't seen any comparison of the digital version of the King of Tone and the Helix versus the analog version into tube amps. I also have a Kemper over here. I use the Kemper a ton. Do they sound different into a Kemper? That's what this video is going to try and answer. I also couldn't really find a decent review of the King of Tone with a bunch of different scenarios and different amps and different tones to show how does it sound. So this is going to be a comprehensive King of Tone video. Hopefully it'll help you guys. If you're curious, you've never played one before, you know, Hopefully I'll be able to help answer, is it worth it? Put your name on the wait list or not, buy a used one or not, or just be content with the Helix if you've got a Helix uh, product. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So the signal chain is gonna be guitar into the King of Tone, out of the King of Tone into the Helix input using a short patch cable so that there's not long cable runs here. Guitars will be my AS330 and then my Les Paul here. And uh, I'll notate what I'm going through, whether it's the Kemper amp or the Helix amp, or the tube amps, but everything will be routed through the Helix. Throughout the video, I'll be interjecting with my impressions as I'm editing the video. So, uh, you know, as I listen to it through headphones, I'll, I'll kind of mention if I hear something different versus what I heard in the room, and uh, if there's any feel uh, differences, anything like that. All right, so let's see how they sound through the Helix. We'll use the Yeetzee Guitar Plexi-ish Pack Plexi preset. And uh, if you wanna learn more about the preset, link in the description below. Let's see how they sound.
right, so I'm listening to the Helix demos right now. Uh, I used Overdriven Amps as a starting point because a lot of people compared the King of Tone to the Helix King of Tone into a Helix through clean or edge of breakup amps. I haven't seen anyone really compare the Helix versus the King of Tone using a Helix amp that's already kind of crunchy and, and ready to go for rock sounds uh, like the Plexi preset is. So for me, it sounds like the analog King of Tone is adding some low mids and lows and just a little muddy in the low end. You can hear it when I really hit hard on the low strings. Uh, whereas the Helix King of Tone seems to just hold together better, stay clear, more defined. Listening back, it sounds like the Helix King of Tone meshes with the Helix amps a little better in this case. And I decided to just crank the gain on the King of Tones just to kind of show how it can handle all of that gain hitting the front end. Um, and how those two compare in that situation. So let's go ahead and play through the Kemper. So I'll use a bunch of different profiles, some super clean ones, some super overdriven ones, Voxy ones, you know, marshall -y ones, to give a wide variety of tones to stack the King of Tone onto. For the clean profile, we'll play through the Tone Junkies Ben Sun Butterfly US2 profile. Super, super clean, kind of just, just, a, just a blank slate basically, and we'll uh, see how it sounds with the King of Tone boosting a very clean amp. Thank mm -hmm. you. So for this example, I've got the yellow sides sounding basically identical. The red side, max gain, distortion, 
sounds basically identical. But it's interesting, once you stack them, there's a pretty obvious difference between the two. Uh, to me, obviously, there's a ton going on, lot, lots and lots of gain, but the King of Tones still sounds good. It still sounds natural. It just sounds like lots of gain, but you know, it still sounds like you would expect it to, whereas it sounds like the Helix just kind of collapses in on itself and gets much smaller and sounds to me very digital. I don't know how to describe it, but just listening to it, just it doesn't sound right. And it didn't feel right when I was playing it either. The King of Tone handled both sides stacked together way better. It's interesting because both sides, again, are pretty much identical side by side. Helix um, to the King of Tone, red side versus red, yellow versus yellow. But once you stack them, things change. And I also made sure to have the order correct so that they're both the same. For a Marshall style clean tone, we'll play through the Tone Junkie Dirty Shirley H1 profile. For a more overdriven sound, we'll go with the Tone Junkie Dirty Shirley H4 profile. I just gotta say, that tone is killer, man. Whew. That that's a that's a profile right there. Wow. Also, the guitar is not not too shabby either. <laughs> So listening to the Dirty Shirley demos, uh, it sounds like yellow versus yellow, red versus red, stack versus stack, they all sound super similar, very little different. So very different from the Benson super clean profile comparison where them stacked was, there's a big difference between the two. Um, but it seems with the Dirty Shirley profiles, they both sound super good. I highly recommend this pack. It's honestly one of my favorites. Now for a Vox bass tone, we'll use the Michael Britt 65 voice Ace 30 B12 Kemper profile. <laughs> Thank you. 
report with the Vox profiles. I picked one that was pretty bright and I decided to try something a little different, crank the gain, see if I could get any difference out of the two. And they both sounded very similar. There's a slight difference in kind of the brightness. Again, it sounds like the King of Tone has more of the low mids going on. Um, so it sounds a little darker, a little fuller, whereas Helix sounds a little thinner, a little brighter. Um, but it's not a massive difference, I don't think. For the tube amp, we're going to play through my Victory V40 because just a great Pedal platform amp is what it's designed for. And it's going to go through a Celestian cream back in a custom 1x12 cabinet. All right, so for the tube amp test, I'm going through the Victory V40 here, and it's going through a Celestian cream back that is mic'd up with some no name off brand SM57 clone I found at my parents' house here, and that's just going to a Scarlet interface, super basic. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the clean tone through the Victory V40. I've got the voice switch in the up position. And I've got the mid kick also in the up position, which is off. And I've got the EQ set a little scooped and the master on full and the volume on about a quarter. So this is kind of the loudest, biggest, most headroom uh, sound the amp will produce. So let's see how that sounds. So that's our bass tone. Let's start with the King of Tone yellow side. Set to boost. Everything is set to noon. Just about. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. And that sounds like this. tone model there, the hair apparent, is set gain set to 7, tone set to 4.6, presence 0, clipping boost, gain mod higher, and level set to 4.9. So uh, the settings on the Helix do not mirror that on the uh, King of Tone, but the gain level and everything else sounds pretty close to my ears. Okay, so now let's go over to the red side of the King of Tone. I currently got it set as follows. So again, the tone is neutral and I've got a little bit more volume than half and I've got the distortion set to about one o'clock. That sounds like this.
of tone model on the helix is set gain set to 7.1, tone set to 4.8, overdrive is the clipping option, gain mod higher, level 5.2. So that one uh, is a little bit closer to the settings on the actual King of Tone, but not quite. To my ears, I'm hearing a good amount of less bass on the Helix version. It sounds thinner to me. Uh, let me just kind of chug on something. So hopefully that demonstrates the uh, difference in the low end. The king, of, the actual king of tone here feels a little, it feels chewier to play. Um, not so much more compressed, it does feel a little more compressed, some more thump to it, some more low mids uh, in the room it sounds like. And uh, yeah, but both sound good, I think. Um, it's, the amp is pretty cranked right now. You know, volume wise, it's pretty loud in here, um, but it sounds good. So let's stick on the, uh, the overdrive here. Raise the uh, volume up a little bit. So now let's go to the middle position and we'll try something. Here's a clean tone.
version wants to feed back a lot more. It's interesting. All right, let's try something else. Okay, so now I've got both sides stacked together. Those are the settings. I rolled back the volume on the boost side a little bit because it was quite loud. So let's hear how that sounds. <laughs> here I've got it in the low power mode master on half and I've got the gain or volume set to three quarters of the way I've got it in voice two now I've raised the mids and I put in the mid kick and dropped the bass a bit so this is my bass tone pretty gnarly let's go ahead and uh, try boosting it with the game tone so I'm gonna try diming the gain on the boost here. And I'll bring in the level. I'll bring back the tone a bit. the drive to a uh, quarter of the way up and bring the level up. Gain on 
three and level on six and a half. So let's hit it with the red side. <laughs> versus the uh, the Helix version. It just loses so much low. Alright, that's it for the tube amps. Love this amp. So super interesting listening to the comparison of the King of Tones through the Victory V40. In the room, there was a massive difference in the low end, I kept talking about it uh, in the video of how in the room the King of Tones felt and sounded like it had a lot more low end, a lot more low mids, whereas the Helix seemed to be more focused and uh, when both sides were stacked, it kind of came across as more anemic almost. It was like the low end got chopped off and you had both sides stacked. However, you know, yellow versus yellow, red versus red, they were very, very close, basically identical. Once you stack them, things got pretty different on the low end specifically. As for which is better, um, I kind of preferred both in certain clips. Uh, overall, I know the King of Tone felt a little nicer to play. It felt a little smoother, um, but I do think the Helix version would cut through in a mix better in general. It was brighter, had less low mid, so it didn't get as congested, um, but both sounded great overall. I was very impressed with both. I wasn't, I was expecting honestly a big difference going through a tube amp and there wasn't that big of a difference. There was a couple of circumstances where there was a big difference, but if you're just doing, you know, one side at a time, they were pretty much identical with the Helix even being a little better in some circumstances because it was brighter naturally, had less low end, so it was a little clearer. So let's talk about some of my impressions after playing all these demos. So first and foremost, I think the Helix was nearly identical in just about every situation. The Helix did a great job, I think. Uh, whether it was through the tube amps or through the Kemper or through the Helix amps, it, it did great. Um, if you own a Helix, I would be very, very, very pleased. Uh, however, there were some differences. Now, I'm gonna have to listen back to the audio to kind of hear exactly how much you guys will pick out, but these are some of my impressions. First is that the actual analog King of Tones seemed to have more low mids and more just kind of punch to the uh, to the notes, it felt meatier to me. Whereas the uh, Helix version seemed thinner and more focused, if that makes sense. So in a mix, the Helix version will probably be better because it doesn't have as much low mids and low end, but just playing both side by side, I prefer the King of Tone. Um, it just felt like it was more substantial to me. In general, I felt like the Helix models were all brighter uh, than the analog King of Tone at identical settings. So I always felt like I had to drop the tone on the Helix uh, models to kind of get it close to this, but I can never get it exact, I felt like, because there's just that difference with the low mids that where this just has more low mids and has less, which might be why this sounds brighter to me because it's perceived as brighter because there's less low mids. So it's thinner and thus brighter. But we're talking very, very you know small amounts of differences. I'm curious to see if you can hear it honestly in the recording back. Uh, but playing that was kind of how I felt. Another thing that I noticed was that there seemed to be more gain on tap with the Helix version. So again, this is high gain both sides and I have the Helix set to high gain uh, for every excerpt. And uh, yeah, it just felt like the Helix version had more gain on tap. So if I set this on 10 on either, either side, red or yellow, I had to drop back the Helix version to like 9.2 or somewhere in that range to kind of get it to be the same. I felt like the Helix just had that extra little bit uh, that it could it could go to 11, whereas this could go to 10, basically. Another difference I noticed was when stacking the two sides together. So I did not use the Tone Sovereign model in Helix uh, where it has both sides stacked in one block. I kept the two blocks separate for a yellow side and a red side, and I always felt like the King of Tone sounded better stacked. 
it sounded, um, I don't know, in some examples, I felt like the Helix sounded a little digital to me with both sides stacked. It just didn't behave the same way. Um, not necessarily worse. In some circumstances, I felt like it was worse. Um, but in general, it just seemed like the Helix was never, I could never get it the same as the King of Town both sides stacked. Even if both sides individually, red side, red side, yellow side, yellow side, were basically identical, I could get them to get be super close. Once you stack them, there were differences for sure. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys if you're looking into getting a King of Tone or wondering, should I you know, splurge for a used one or should I just wait the two years or should I even bother? It doesn't even matter. The Helix has a King of Tone. Is it, is it good enough? Um, hopefully this video helps you guys, helps you answer those questions. Um, I, I still think it's valid to want an actual analog King of Tone. Uh, but I also don't think it's worth spending $500 for, uh, even if it sounded better, honestly, $500 for an overdrive is insane to me, but I bought this brand new and it was not cheap. You know, this is a pretty penny regardless of buying it new or used, especially once you add an option like four jack option, uh, it just, it gets pricey, high gain both sides, all the little things add up. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm really digging the King of Tone. I'm really impressed. Uh, honestly, having an analog version helped me set up the Helix versions, um, tweak the settings a little bit more. There's just something about having big knobs on an analog pedal that I feel like it's just so much easier to get a good sound quickly. Whereas with the Helix, you have these little, you know, these little tiny micro knobs here. And uh, I don't know, it's just, it's probably all in my head, but I just feel like this is easier to set things up with. But it's been great comparing the two. Lots of great tones were had, I feel like. And uh, yeah, I'm just really impressed with the King of Tone in general, where it's the you know Helix version or the analog version. It's an awesome pedal. And uh, definitely try one out if you've never tried one out before. All right, guys, that concludes the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you really liked it, share it with some friends. And if you really, really liked it, consider subscribing. I've got a ton more guitar content coming. Kemper stuff, tube amp stuff, Helix stuff, guitar stuff bridge comparison, gear reviews. I've got so much stuff lined up. I'm super excited. So uh, go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more and comment below what you want to see next. All right, see you guys.